Let's make a deal. If you can give me just 10 minutes, I can fix your lower back pain permanently. I've created a 10 minute program that you can do every day that will fix your lower back pain and improve your posture. If you want your back to stop hurting, stick around and we'll fix it together. Sitting is one of the biggest contributors to lower back pain. What is it about sitting that ruins our posture? When you are seated, your hip flexors are in a shortened position. Over time, they get used to that and become tight. This causes us to lose hip extension mobility. We need hip extension every day. For example, when we walk, we need about 10 to 15 degrees of hip extension every time we step. Our hip flexors can end up getting so tight that we can't even stand up without arching our back. This causes the spinal erectors in the lumbar region of our back to become tight. Because our spinal erectors are tight, our central nervous system is sending an impulse to our rectus abdominis, its antagonist, to relax. This inhibition of the rectus abdominis results in weak abs. Through this same mechanism, tight hip flexors can lead to diminished glute strength because the glutes are the direct antagonist of the hip flexors. So if your hip flexors are tight, you probably have underactive and weak glutes. When these four symptoms present together, it is called lower crust syndrome. The reason why this is called lower crust syndrome is because if we draw a line between the two weak areas and then draw a line between the two tight areas, it results in a cross. Lower crust syndrome can be a major cause of lower back pain and something called anterior pelvic tilt, which is the tilting of your hips that causes your lower back to arch excessively. To fix anterior pelvic tilt, all we need to do is look at lower cross syndrome for what it is, a collection of symptoms. If we can address and fix the cause of each of these symptoms, over time, lower back pain will be a thing of the past. We just need to strengthen the areas that are lacking strength and mobilize the areas that are lacking mobility. It's that simple. So looking at the diagram again, we have tight spinal erectors, rectus femoris and iliopsoas. And the weak structures are the rectus abdominis and the glutes, specifically the medius and maximus. To get the best out of this program, we need to understand what posterior pelvic tilt is. All the exercises I'm about to show you become much more effective if you can tilt your hips posteriorly. The first step to learning this movement is to lay down on the floor with your legs out in front of you. You will notice that you are able to slide your hands underneath your lower back. Posterior pelvic tilt is simply flattening your back against the floor by tilting your hips or tucking your tailbone under your spine. Once you are comfortable doing this on the floor, the next step is to do it against a wall. Once we have this movement under control, we can stretch the hip flexors effectively. We are going to start by stretching the iliacus and psoas, which are grouped together and called iliopsoas. To lengthen the iliopsoas, we are going to perform the classic hip flexor stretch. First, I'll show you how to do it incorrectly. If I do this stretch incorrectly by simply pushing my hips forward, all that happens is I excessively arch my lower back and any stretch that I feel is just my joint capsule jamming at the front of my hip. To perform this stretch correctly, the setup is key. We need a 90 degree angle at the front and back knee as well as the hips. We need to be as upright as possible. We should be able to draw a straight line from the top of our torso all the way down to the bottom of our femur. From here, we're going to squeeze the glute of the trailing leg and tilt our hips back using the exact same movement I just showed you. There is also one of our quadriceps in particular that we need to focus on. For this to make sense, we need to look at the anatomy of the quads. You have four quads. Obviously. Three of your four quads are in the vastus group. They include the vastus lateralis, medialis and intermedius which lies under your fourth quad, the rectus femoris. Rectus femoris is unique in that it is the only one of your quadriceps that crosses both the hip and the knee. All of the vastus group only cross the knee. What this means is to stretch this muscle effectively we need to stretch it at both ends. To perform this stretch, we will begin kneeling with our shin flat against the wall behind us. You can see immediately that my quadriceps are stretching at both my knee and my hip. The goal is to over time rest your back flat against the wall, making sure that you're not excessively arching your lower back. To prevent this, make sure you are contracting your abs the entire time. If we look at the diagram of lower cross syndrome again, we can see that the glutes are in need of strengthening. Your glutes are comprised of three muscles, the glute medius, maximus, and minimus. We are going to focus on medius and maximus. To strengthen the glute medius, we are going to do the clam. To begin, we are going to lay down with both legs together, bent at about a 45 degree angle. Think about being in a sit-up position and just rolling over onto one side. From here, we will lift and rotate the top leg by activating the glute medius. Once your strength increases, you can add an elastic band to the movement to increase the difficulty. And now we will focus on the glute max. The glute max is the largest muscle in your body. To develop our glute strength, we are going to perform the classic glute bridge. 
To perform a glute bridge, we are going to place our upper back on a bench or a chair or even the floor. From there, we are going to lift our hips up as high as we can and squeeze our glutes at the top. That effectively is the glute bridge. It seems pretty simple, but the devil is in the detail. Oftentimes when people do a glute bridge, they report not feeling it in their glutes. The reason is because when we get to the top of this movement, we can do one of two things. The first is that you are arching your lower back excessively and not actually achieving hip extension. If your glute mechanics are bad enough, your hamstrings can take over almost completely. Luckily, there's a way around this. Remember earlier in the video when I said, when a muscle contracts, your central nervous system will tell the muscle on the other side to relax? That is known as Sherrington's law of reciprocal inhibition. Let's use the arm as an example. What would happen if I contracted my bicep and my tricep at the same time? The muscle wouldn't move. If I want to raise my arm, I need to contract my bicep while letting my tricep relax. My central nervous system also knows this and it does it for me. Knowing this, all we need to do in the glute bridge to target our glutes more is to contract our quads. Because by Sherrington's law, if I contract my quads, then my hamstrings must relax. To activate my quads in the glute bridge, I'm going to begin with my feet flat on the floor. From here, I'm going to drive my toes into the ground as if I was trying to straighten my leg. This will activate my quads and by Sherrington's law, my central nervous system will tell my hamstrings to relax. Make sure that your abs are contracted to prevent your lower back from arching excessively and then the only thing that can do hip extension are your glutes. So with a little bit of science, your glute bridges are now more effective. And now we come to rectus abdominis, which is also in need of strengthening. The first thing that you would probably think to strengthen the abs is some kind of a sit up or a crunch. Ideally, we don't want to be training the movement of hip flexion directly because the hip flexors are already tight and overworked. So what we're going to do is we're going to borrow an exercise from gymnastics, the hollow body. The good thing about the hollow body is that it's isometric. So we are not doing repetitive hip flexion like in the sit up. To perform a hollow body, we're going to lay down with our legs flat on the floor. We're going to lift our feet off the ground as if we are performing the start of a leg raise. Then, raise your upper body off the floor as if you are performing a crunch. Throughout the entire movement, drive your lower back down towards the floor. When we consciously drive our lower back down to the floor, what is actually happening is we are posteriorly rotating our pelvis. That's why the hollow body is a great addition to the program because we are directly training in a position we want to improve. So that's it. If you do each of these movements, you are directly targeting the cause of lower cross syndrome, which is the thing that is causing your lower back pain and poor posture in the first place. Looking at the causes of lower cross syndrome, you can see that each exercise in this program serves a purpose. I'll link the entire program program as a PDF in the description below. If you can commit just 10 minutes a day on this program, your anterior pelvic tilt and your back pain will be a thing of the past. Just remember that these postural problems have developed over a long period of time, so it's important to be patient and persistent with the exercises. Let me know in the comments if this program has helped your lower back pain because I'd love to hear it. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. My name's Nikki, this is QED Fitness, and I'll catch you next time.